everyone, it's Erin Johnson with OutstandingOhio.com. I'm here today with another Making It Monday, helping you to make something great. Today we're going to be making bucket lists. So you can make one of these for your quarantine bucket list, or for a travel bucket list, or for your life bucket list, or use it for a vision board, or your goals for the year, or a chore chart. Really, you could use it for so many different things. Um, this is a version that I made and I sold a kit for it through uh, my crafting company, Live, Love, and Create, but I'm gonna show you how to make a simple version that you could easily get the supplies for at a craft store, or maybe you have them at home if you're crafty, uh, or if you would like to buy the kit, you're, you're obviously welcome to do so, but not necessary. So we're gonna get started. The first thing you need is a canvas. You can use any size. This here, I think, is an eight by 10. I think this one was, um, the next size up, I can't remember what it is, nine by 12 probably. Um, and you're going to actually take the canvas off. So it's just stapled to the back. You can literally just pull it and yank it off. The corners can sometimes get tricky. If you have an X-Acto knife, you could use that or just scissors if you want to kind of slice it off a bit. This is probably the hardest part. A little bit tricky to get it off sometimes. Okay, once you get that going, then you should be able to pull it off the other side. And if you want to keep the canvas to use it for another project, you can. Um, but it's not needed for this project. Okay, so once you do that, the only disclaimer is this is, um, you know, not necessarily intended to be used like this. So sometimes there'll be um, some weird lettering on it or um, like there's this red mark right here. There's often staples. Sometimes it's not uh, consistent. So there might be staples in two of the corners and not all four, but you're gonna paint over it or you can use it natural if you like. Um, but, you know, don't worry too much about that. So I'm actually gonna paint this one. I've decided I'm gonna make myself a little outstanding Ohio board that I can't decide yet if I'm gonna use it to put places that I wanna go and check out um, or if I'm gonna use it for like goals or something or maybe we'll see both. But I'm thinking it might be putting up there all the cool places that I discover through the group and otherwise and that'll be my nice reminder that of things that I want to go see and do. So you just want to uh, take some craft acrylic paint and you can paint it on. You can use the baby wipe method if you want or you can, I'm just using here a foam brush and definitely want to paint the front but I would recommend painting the inside edges and the outside edges. I wouldn't worry so much about the back. If you use the baby wipe method, it'll look more like a stain because it dilutes it a little bit with the um, wetness of the wipe. And if you use a brush, it'll be more uh, darker and opaque. So if you don't put too much on, it should dry pretty fast. If these little, Crevices also bother you. See those little things in the corner? The trick I've found is to take a popsicle stick and a baby wipe or a paper towel and put the paint on the baby wipe or paper towel and then kind of wrap your stick around it and then shove it in there. And that, that gets the paint in there. I think most people don't probably even notice that, but if it bothers you, then that's an option for how to get some paint in there. Okay, so I've got that all painted. I'm just gonna set it aside to dry for a little bit. It shouldn't take too long to dry. But while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to cut out some of the shapes to uh, write my messages on. 
So these I cut out with my Cricut machine. So if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette or some kind of die cutting machine, obviously you can go to town and have a lot of fun. I might wanna cut out some little Ohio's for mine, would be fun. But if you don't, um, you can certainly just cut out squares or um, I'm gonna trace a cup to do a few circles just to make, make it interesting. So I just have some uh, cardstock scraps that I figured I'd do uh, grays and whites and uh, cut a few shapes out of here. So let's see if I can get this down. So like I said, I'm just gonna trace this cup. See how I like that for a circle. It might be a little on the big side. But we'll go with that and then cut it out. Let's see if I can fold it and cut two at once actually. If you're like me, I can hardly cut a straight line some days. We'll see how this looks. So, a little jaggedy, but we got a couple of circles. And then, I think I'm just going to cut some squares or rectangles. Not super square, like I said. <laughs> uh, maybe we could do a triangle. So you can have fun with it and just do some different shapes. That might be fun to do, like make them look like little pennants, like a pennant banner. Maybe I'll do that. That seems like fun. Get another shade of gray here. this one and make more. So whatever you, you want to do, um, or you can find, there's probably some papers out there that you can buy that are already cut small or different shapes to make it fun. Um, or you can just use whatever you have, post-it notes, whatever. But go ahead and cut some out and make sure you have some extras so that um, even if you're not gonna use them all for whatever's on your goal list or your bucket list right now, that when you do are inspired with something else that you have some handy and ready to go and you don't have to come back and cut more and so forth. All right, the next step once your uh, frame is dry is to get some twine and wrap it around. Of course, the hardest part's always figuring out how to start it. Okay, so I just take a little bit of duct tape to get it started and tape it on the back and one of the corners. So I'm just gonna tape it up here to secure it while I get started. Okay, so once you have it taped on, you're just going to wrap it around. Now you can do this uh, either direction. So I had the other example was vertical. You could also do it horizontal. You're gonna want the twine to go um, left to right for whichever direction that you want so that it can more easily hold the clothespins. So if you're going vertical, you're gonna wanna start wrapping this way and you can go you know, around in different directions and you can make it as sparse or as thick as you want but the key is to hold that twine tight the whole time so that you've got a secure place to put your clothespins and it's not going to all droop down. Um, I did this craft with some kids at the kids craft club. I think I also did it at a summer camp and they definitely needed a little bit of assistance with keeping it tight but otherwise this can be a good craft for kids. Alright so I'm going to actually tape this in this direction because I've decided I'm going to make this horizontal. I think it'll be fun with the little pennant shapes. So I'm just going to pull it around in different directions so that it's crossing up and down and not just straight left to right. And enough 
different options of where to put my um, clothespins on here. So I think I like it like that. It's kind of full, but not too full. And then you're just gonna cut it at the end. And then I like to just tie it on the back to a nearby piece of twine and give it a good double or triple knot. Again, make sure it stays real tight. right there and then I'm just gonna cut off the end and then I can go back to where I started and take this tape off and do the same thing and tie that beginning piece of twine to a piece of twine on the back real tight so that it stays secure you can keep the tape on if you want but I figure that tying it in that's a little bit more secure of course I should have left a little bit more of a tail wasn't thinking. I think I might actually put a piece of tape on there too. We'll do both. So I didn't get a very good knot on there. So I just did that with some tape. Okay, so now I have it painted and I have the twine and I can add my papers. So you can just get some of the little mini clothespins. These are, I think, an inch. And you can attach the papers wherever you want. And as many as you want. You can keep them up blank and then fill them out or only put them up once they're filled out. And then once you do the task or the chore or whatever it is, you can take them off and put on more. Well, I think it's gonna be cute. I'm excited. If you um, don't wanna run around town finding supplies for these things, again, I have a kit that I can uh, sell and personalize to whatever colors that you want. a lot of fun with it. So yeah, you can add on the shapes however you want. And this is my finished product. I added a couple of things that I wanted to try. So uh, you'll definitely want to hang this up because that'll allow you um, to really see it well. You'll want to put a sawtooth hanger on the back. I buy the ones that you can just hammer in because I can't deal with those little tiny nails. Um, or I suppose you could maybe just hang it on the edge here, like on a tack or something. Um, but to make it secure, I would suggest the sawtooth hanger. And hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a lot of fun. If you make one for yourself, I'd love to see it. And love to see what your um, goals are, what's on your bucket list, what's on your vision board. What are you, what are you putting on your board? So uh, thanks for watching.